Today, let's talk about how to fill hair gaps or make hair more dense in Photoshop. How many times it has happened with you that you have your subject or yourself in the frame, there's a continuous strand of hair and suddenly there's a hair gap. Or maybe you just have a few strands of hair and it's not dense enough. What to do? Today we're gonna learn what to do in those situations. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's super easy and you won't believe how easily we can get that done in no time. All right, let's begin. So here we are and again I've managed to cage myself in the funny screen capture of Photoshop and this image was submitted by Kasha. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. So as you can see if I zoom in, let's look at her hair. There are a couple of hair gaps that we need to fill. That's the hair. Her hair is excellent but she wants to fill the hair gap. Let's do that for her. Alright. So number one thing, make a copy of the background layer. Always do that. If you work on the background layer, that's a cardinal sin of Photoshop. By the way, I learned a couple of Photoshop abuses lately. One of them is layer flattener. Try to use it on people who flatten layers. Alright, so the first thing that you need to do, select a strand of hair that doesn't have hair gaps. Okay, so select the lasso tool and always select more than what you have to. Now this is kind of the same technique that we used when we were extending hair, one of the tutorials, previous tutorials. If you have not watched yet, make sure I go ahead and watch it out right here. Okay, so select more than you have to. This is the strand of hair which doesn't have any kind of hair gaps. There you go. Now, control a command J. Our first job is just to fill the areas, don't worry about the edges, don't worry about how poor the selection is, just fill the areas with hair gaps, just do that right now, okay? So you might want to fill this area with this and control T and select the warp tool and try to match it up with the top, there you go. Now it matches up pretty nice, okay? Now once you're satisfied, hit enter. There you go. Now don't worry about the edges right now. We'll take care of that later. Okay. Let's turn off this layer. Again, we need to fill this. Okay. Fill this area. So for this area, I think this sample would be great. So we'll select this layer again and take the lasso tool and select this sample. Always select more than you have to. Okay. Press control J. Now we might have to flip it. Okay. Control T. Let's copy it and let's right click on it and flip horizontally. There you go. And we fill this area. Okay. Let's look whether we have filled it enough. That's enough, I guess. Let's copy one more strand from here. Let's turn it off. Let's try fill this area a little bit. Let's get back here and let's try filling this with this area. Control or Command J and we copy it somewhere here. We did a copy, right? I don't think we did a copy. Control or Command J and place it on. There you go. Control T, right click on it, select warp and line it up. Line it up right now. Take care of the edges later. Okay. Line it up. Just line it up. All right. That's pretty good. Awesome. Turn it off. Now it's time for this area. Now we can take samples from this area also. Let's get back to this layer and we can take samples like this one for this area. Control or command J and oops. Control T and let's copy it there. All right. Now that's pretty much matching, right? That's looking great. Okay. Right click on it. Go to warp and let's try matching it even more. Okay. Let's try inverting it. Control T, flip horizontal. Let's try rotating it just a little bit and lining, lining up with this area. Not pretty much good here. That's great. Okay. That's okay. Hit enter. Now there's a strand left here. We might need to fill it up. Maybe let's try this one. Okay. Let's get back to this one and let's try this strand. Control or command J. Let's copy it and paste it right here. Now turn off everything. Now one by one, Turn on each layer and smoothen and adjust. Okay, so let's turn on this one. Now let's smoothen it up and adjust. Click on that mask button. Take the brush, 
Make sure black is the foreground color. Flow is somewhere low around 20 to 30 ish. And then you start painting on the edges. Make the brush a little smaller to make the brush smaller or bigger. Press and hold alter option. Drag it to the right using the right mouse button to make it bigger. Drag it to the left to make it smaller. Drag it upwards to make it soft, downwards to make it hard. Okay. So let's try making it smooth. There you go. Let's look at the before and after. Is it making much of a difference? Yes. Now you might want to brighten it up just a little bit. So add a curves adjustment layer just to this one. Close it right now and press and hold alter option and click on this one so that the curves adjustment layer just affects this one layer. Okay. So let's brighten it up just a little bit, just a hair. There you go. Let's look at the before and after, before, after. Now it's matching more. Okay. You might want to just, uh, all right. Now that's pretty good. Now let's add another one. Okay. This one. This is a big one. Let's do the same thing. Create a mask. Take the brush. Black is the foreground color and try to match it. Okay. Remove, erase it from the edges. Okay. There you go. Let's look at the before, after. Pretty much matching. All right. Let's add another one. Now this one was added right here. Okay. Create a mask and try erasing the edges. There you go. Let's try another one. This one, create a mask and erase the edges. Now you might have to use what curves here. Okay. So add curves adjustment layer. Make sure you press and hold alter option. Click on that line between these two layers so that it just affects that one and try to brighten it up just a hair. Okay. All right. So now let's rub the edges before, after. All right. Let's come to the mask and let's try erasing some areas, certain areas. Let's try this one. And we need to create a mask here and take the brush. Black is the foreground color. All right, let's look at the overall before and after. I think we don't need this one, do we? No, I don't think we need this one. But what if we try to take it a little down like that? Okay, and let's try the brush and erase certain areas like this one. There you go. So we are finally done with filling up those annoying hair gaps. Let's look at the overall before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Makes a lot of difference, especially to the client. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you know the drill, you know what to do. Make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell button because sometimes I also go live apart from this tips, tricks and tutorials. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We are, we are dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust